In 2015, SSM will start manufacturing super clean burning cook stoves, designed by Aprovecha Research Center and funded by the U.S. Department of Energy. Here are the five prototype stoves that will be improved upon by two rounds of field testing in six countries, China, India, Cambodia, Peru, Ghana, and Kenya. This is the sunken pot rocket stove. Dr. Larry Winiarski invented the sunken pot rocket in 1982. ARC's new prototype features 49% thermal efficiency, an optional forced air system, and a chimney to remove emissions from the room. This is ARC's new side feed forced air stove. High velocity jets of air rise from the bottom of the stove and create a zone of near complete combustion. The air to fuel ratio is adjusted to reduce ultra fine particles. This is the top loaded forced air stove. Dr. Tom Reed invented the fan assisted T-LUD or toplet updraft design that is used in the Philips, BP, and BioLite stoves. Arc added a door just beneath the pot to assist loading fuel and more bottom air to burn fuel cleanly. This is Arc's low carbon monoxide charcoal stove. When charcoal is well made, the wood is changed to carbon, which emits very little smoke. When the charcoal is burned in a very well insulated combustion chamber with secondary air above the fuel bed, the emissions of CO can be drastically reduced. This is the natural draft T-LUD. Kirk Harris developed an advanced T-LUD stove that has a large turndown ratio, 5 kilowatts at high power and 1.7 kilowatts at low power. The stove is very clean burning and boils water quickly using various fuel combinations. Hi, welcome to Aprovecho Research Center. These are the five stoves that we developed for uh, the Department of Energy with a grant from DOE. And so I was thinking that I would just very quickly show you um, this, the advances that we've made uh, on these various stoves. And all of these will be at Ethos. So if you're gonna come to Ethos, you can see them making popcorn or s'mores. Well, um, the big change that happened with the rocket stove is that if, say, 10 centimeters of the stick is burning, then uh, the stove is uh, pretty clean. Not super clean, but moderately clean. And then um, when you combine that with heat transfer that is up above 45% thermal efficiency, and we get that by having the pot submerged down into the body of the stove and there is a 7 mm gap between the outside of the pot and the skirt and then the hot gases go down the outside of the skirt and exit from the chimney which uh, is below the bottom of the pot. So uh, Here's where the chimney goes. And, and so um, a rocket stove at medium power with say four small sticks burning can be moderately clean as long as only 10 centimeters of the end of the stick is burning. And then when you match that 2.5 to 3 kilowatt of firepower to a 7 mm gap, you get a stove that can get threes and even um, some fours, the easier fours, on the IWA measures. Right, here's the side feed fan stove. And, um, you know, Dr. Tom Reed invented the top loaded stove. Uh, quite a long time ago in the 80s and it has uh, secondary air jets that uh, where the air is preheated and then they're so forceful that they fill the entire top of the stove with flame and there is extremely good mixing between the gas, the fire, the air and the smoke and so you get almost complete combustion in this batch loaded stove. But when you move to side feed, we actually found 
And Trevor, you might be able to see something in there. Um, we found that air coming up from the bottom of the combustion chamber is actually more effective than the secondary air jets. And so there's a fan underneath here and uh, many, many small holes in the bottom of the combustion chamber, which is metal, blowing these fierce jets of air up into the fire. And uh, so this would only be primary air, which is then resulting in a very clean combustion. And so uh, you still have what looks like a normal rocket stove, but where the bottom of the combustion chamber has these very, very fast, very small jets of air interacting with the fire, uh, increasing mixing. About a year ago, Kirk Harris came to the open house in the winter after Ethos 2014, and he continued working on this TLUD, trying to get um, a good turndown ratio, which means that you have both high and low power, both of which are clean burning, and uh, he succeeded. Now, part of any stove is using as little fuel as possible so that you make the least amount of emissions to accomplish the task. And so when you have something like the super pot, then the gases are, the hot gases are hitting both the bottom, but also going up the sides of the pot, increasing the surface area. And so in any of these stoves, all of this good performance is based on heat transfer uh, efficiency above 45%. So let's look at Kirk's stove. Um, I think the most amazing thing about it is that there is a plate down here that goes up and down and is, um, when it's all the way over, that plate has totally closed off the combustion chamber. And when we open it, then the plate has moved away from the bottom of the combustion chamber and you're getting primary air into the chamber. Um, when you totally uh, cut off the primary air, then you're reducing the rate of combustion. And so uh, this is the first TLUD, thank you, Kirk, that I think uh, that I've seen that has both high and low power at, uh, at, at doing clean combustion. So here's the combustion chamber. And then Kirk also invented a completely new way of, um, getting mixing into the tea lead. So instead of in the normal tea lead, all of the gases, the smoke, the flame, the air will pass up through a hole. And when the flame and all the gases go up through that hole, they get very good mixing. Instead of doing that, but that limits the firepower of the stove. When, what Kirk did was he has blades, stationary blades, that create a really effective amount of swirl. And so that swirl, you can, it actually provides a lot higher firepower than the old technique of having the, um, the flame go through a hole uh, while getting great mixing. And so this new top of the T-LUD is um, we, this stove is five kilowatts at high power and like 1.5 at low power. So it's um, a, a very effective stove. And uh, so the two go together like this and you have Kirk Harris's new T-LED. I think that I am in some ways most proud of the progress on the charcoal stove. 
because charcoal, when it's well made and all of the wood has been changed to carbon, doesn't make smoke. It's the wood inside that would have smoked, and if you get rid of it, then charcoal uh, is a, it's a fuel that, that just doesn't smoke. The problem with charcoal is that you make a lot of carbon dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide, because there's no flame in most charcoal stoves above the fuel bed, and then the CO can escape uncombusted. Well, um, Ryan Thompson and Sam Benson worked on this idea for a very long time, and what they discovered was that if you have extremely effective insulation in the stove, so uh, very, very lightweight, very high R insulation, the combustion chamber will get above 670 C very quickly in uh, less than two or three minutes. And then the temperature is sufficient above the fuel bed to burn up the, the CO. And so this is actually the stove that scores best on the IWA measures. This is all fours. And um, I guess I never thought that charcoal would be part of the solution, a possible solution to uh, clean indoor air. The way this is working is you have a lot of primary air, so a very big door, but that door can completely seal, which then allows for very, very large um, turn down ratio. And then Trevor, if you come over, you can see that there is a um, annulus created uh, between an inner wall and this uh, fecal layer, and then um, jets of preheated secondary air completely fill this space, and you um, are then burning up the CO. The other thing is that the grate um, had to have a lot of space so that you, um, so that primary air is rising up through the fuel. And so just again, I, I guess I like this one because it was people just continuing to develop the obvious ideas and that when you combine several things like super great insulation, airtight door, big enough primary air, secondary air, and then a grate that allows the, the primary air through the fuel for high power, you uh, get a very improved product. As I was saying, Dr. Tom Reed and um, Ron Larson are responsible for, you know, really both of the big um, innovations that we look to when we look at super clean. One is a fan stove and the other is the natural draft tea lead. So um, thank you guys, good job. The only difference between um, the Tom Reed stove and this new uh, DOE developed version is it always bothered us that you'd have to slip the fuel right underneath the pot. And so in this version, the fuel goes through a pretty big door and then drops down into the combustion chamber. And um, it took a little while to figure out how to make that door and uh, how to have no flame backdraft out of there. And then to get the um, heat transfer efficiency back up to um, 45. And um, one of the ways to do that was to have a bigger diameter uh, combustion chamber. And um, then the only other thing is that the, we added a little bit more primary air that, than in Tom's stove because 
this stove, uh, it doesn't need it when it's batch fed, but it needs it when you meter in fuel to be able to um, have it not smoke. And so there's a little bit more primary air, but the secondary air is pretty much like in Tom stove. And then the last thing is we had to super insulate under the bottom of the combustion chamber to make that fecal metal floor extremely hot so that the fire would never go out. And uh, I, that's one of the things I like about this stove is even if it's been going for a while and the fire's gone out, the floor is so hot that you uh, put a piece of wood in there and it, it will um, combust. So these are the five new stoves and um, we are writing a book about all of this and that book will have all CAD drawings of all of these prototype stoves. Uh, we will try to make the book be helpful to everybody and it will be done by the end of the DOE grant which is in October.